Welcome back uh, to another video. We're trying to do this week by week. Uh, thanks for your likes and subscribes. Play some sad music behind this. If you can find it in your heart to like and subscribe to my channel, it'll be greatly, deeply appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. And we're back. This particular video, I've been asked to do logo cufflinks for the director of the company by another director, which is a wonderful gift. The first thing that you want to do is the design process. In this particular case, it was fairly simple and straightforward. So we printed out the logo on a piece of paper and then stuck that onto the actual metal. Print glue works the best for me in any case in this application. Make sure your materials are nice and clean, flat, make sure it's annealed. I quench it in methylated spirits, which naturally just cleans the material. But make sure you've got no oils or anything on the metal surface to make sure that the glue does the best job it possibly can. Once the glue is dried and you're ready to cut out, take care to make sure that you're cutting outside the line. You want to always see the line so that you can work it off and file it precisely to the line. If you're cutting it on the line, you're essentially smaller than the actual design that you're going for. So always work slightly bigger. Once you've cut the actual shape out and you've refined the outside lines and you're quite happy with that, you can simply heat the piece of metal up slightly, just about 100 degrees so that the glue burns away. After this, I'll take that material, which has now got a little bit of the glue stain on it, and just clean it up by sanding it down on some fine sandpaper. This also helps to make sure that the two contact pieces, which we're going to bring together in the next step, makes 100% contact everywhere as they touch, which helps with the soldering. So once I've cleaned the material up and I'm sitting with an exact outside reference to the design, you can then take your divider and divide the, from the outside inwards exactly where you need the inside frame to be cut. There might be exceptions where it doesn't work, but generally speaking, by following the outside line, you can trace a nice framework. Obviously, if you've got any questions regarding your particular design, you're more than welcome to leave it in the comments below. Once I've cut the outside out and I'm happy with the actual shape of the, of the cufflinks, you could use something sharp and press down so that your drill has a guide to drill through and drill the holes on the inside. From here onwards, we've got to open the saw blade and put it through a hole to cut out the inside form. And the same rules apply, you cut it out on the side of the line to make sure that when you've got your finished product cut out, you can refine it with a needle file. So at this point in time, we have the two pieces that are completely prepared. For me to be able to preserve the shine or the finish that I have on the bottom plate, I'm using brassic powder mixed in with some isopropyl alcohol. This is the green flame that you see. If you just going to be using flux and solder, you might find that you get a bit of tarnish on the actual material, which I was trying to avoid in this case. I'm using the GRS uh, third hand clamp solder station to elevate the entire item a little higher. I'm not soldering from the top because what would happen is the heat actually would first heat up the thinner plate. And if you're working with solder, it's going to tend to want to jump on top of the thinner plate. So the idea is to bring the heat in from the bottom and moving it around in such a way that it draws the solder down and underneath the top plate. We then let it cool down, put it in the, kip in the pickle, and then from there onwards, I do a rough cut. It just makes life easier because if you're cutting as close as you possibly can, but not touching your actual edges, you're always preserving the design. And then that allows me to then clamp it and file it. You're not gonna run it all the way down to the design itself with the roughest file and then have to work any of that away. It's all a process of getting it lower down to bring the next file in and then the next file and then the sandpaper. You wanna end up with the sandpaper again on the actual design. You're sort of treating your edges as a no-go zone. And the very finest of your sandpaper is where you're gonna be touching the two parts together. I use a shellac to hold the tops down for the, for the stipple finish. I'm using my Lindsay air graver and I'm mounting into the air graver a little burr which I've taken the top off and I've made incredibly sharp. Rather than just a perfectly round hole, I create a little diamond finish at the top. This is my newt. Once I'm finished with a stipple finish, I take it out of the shellac, clean it up, Again, work it on incredibly fine sandpaper. I think we go down right down to about 3000 on this to make basically what I do by doing this is I'm eliminating the process of having to do it after I've added parts onto it. It's easier when you're working really tidy 
to do a quick solder over here and not have to worry about scratches that are still left behind by a, a rougher sandpaper. So we go right down to 3000. Then I sweat the actual, the, the backs onto the cufflinks. What I mean by sweating is I pre-drill a small hole exactly in the middle. Then I put a little ball phrase in there, uh, maybe a one or a 1.2 millimeter ball phrase. I fill the hole with the, with the solder flatten it again so effectively I have a perfectly flat surface with a hole that's been filled with solder. I then place and position the backs on the actual cufflinks and then heat it up with a little bit of liquid flux. What happens there is as soon as the solder starts running it only runs exactly in the area where the surface is touching it. So there are no marks where you're coming in from the side and placing a ball of solder that you have to get rid of. This is why we do the pre-polish with the 3000 paper. And once you've finished with this, it's an incredibly neat finish. And before the solder, I'm now treating the piece that I've done the stipple finish on with the same regard as what I do for the corners and the design finish. So everything is protected. By soldering it from the back, even though the back isn't covered with brassic powder, I again paint a thick paste of it on the front area so that the heat doesn't affect the color or the work I've done on the front of the cuffling. Now that the cufflings are assembled, polishing is such a wonderful experience. It's less time on the polisher because most of the scratches are removed. Cleaning it up becomes a joy and once it's gone through the ultrasonic machine, in this particular case being nine carat, I gave it a bit of a rhodium plating as well. So this is what the cufflings look like. We're quite happy with it. I've shared some of these images with the particular director that commissioned these with me and everybody's incredibly excited. We've managed to keep the logo incredibly recognizable and at the same time create a set of cufflings to make it wearable for those particular events. I hope you find this video interesting and helpful. If you've got any questions, as per usual, let us know. We love this community and if we can help in any possible way, we're always happy to do so.